Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're really excited to bring this one to you. You know, in, in a sense, this video has been a couple months in the making as I've kind of gathered, ordered, bought, amassed some of these different platforms. In another sense of the word, this, is, this video is two and a half years in the making because I got my first saddle platform two and a half years ago. We're going to compare and contrast, slightly review some of these. I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm not going to hold back on any of them for you. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, although I have extensive experience with some of them. So uh, we're really excited to bring this to you. We're going to uh, go over them one by one. I'm going to show you some of the finer points, some things I like about them, some of the things I don't like about them. We're going to take them out back and put them in the trees for you. Uh, I'll suit up, put my saddle on everything. We'll show you side pressure. We'll show you everything walking around them, how, how solid each of them are, what it takes to put them on a tree in some instances, because there's some of these that you kind of got to know some techniques about them uh, and then we'll take them back inside my archery shop we'll weigh them we'll measure them we'll give you price breakdowns on them we'll try to compare everything to you so you've got a, you can make a really informed decision on what you'd like to start off with as a beginning or maybe a not beginning maybe it's an expert saddle hunter so stick around I think you'll get a lot out of this one Hey guys, we are back out here in what we affectionately call our testing grounds behind the house and uh, out of the woods. And we're going to start off with the Wild Edge Perch as platform number one. You know, I mentioned that I've got some extensive experience with some of these this systems. This is uh, absolutely the one. I was actually standing in the booth, uh, in the Wild Edge booth at the Iowa Deer Classic when Matt Garris pulled this platform out of his duffel bag and shared it with the Wild Edge team. And I actually stood on it for about nine hours that day, kind of uh, showing it off to the people that, that was coming by in the booth. I was actually not a part of the industry at the time. I just got finished writing and researching and, and doing all the work for my uh, huge uh, saddle hunting uh, article that was published in Peterson's Bow Hunting and uh, that actually hadn't even come out at that point yet. But I was one of the first ones to see this platform and uh, I adopted it into my run and gun style, used it for, uh, well, ever since then, what, it's been two and a half years or whatever. So I've got, you know, I average about 100 sits a year. So um, I've probably got I don't know, 300 in addition to all the trade shows that I worked with this and everything. I've probably got three or 400 sits on this thing. So I've got a lot of experience with this. So let's show you exactly how it works and how to put it up on a tree. Now, this by itself, this is the perch. And uh, you'll notice this is a Gen 1 perch. Uh, a good buddy of mine, Zach Owsley, uh, developed one that uh, a later generation Gen 2 that has some tabs on it that help hold it in place if this uh if the step itself has got out of spec or has got bent or twisted though those tabs will help hold it into place if your step is in spec it, it's not really necessary um it's not a deal breaker whether you got gen 1 gen 2 we're going to talk about a lot of things that have that's you know doesn't have anything to do with that uh as, as you're using this but but this by itself is is worthless uh, to be honest with you uh you have to have a step for it to nestle in before it to become a legitimate platform and so let's show you how to do that. You, the best way I figured out over the years is to put this on, you need to put the step on by itself first. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there have questions, you know, they struggle putting a perch on, they, they uh, can't get it to get rock solid. You really want to put the, the step on first and you don't have to have this super tight. In fact, let me, I don't want to step so high. We're obviously not climbing the tree today. This is just for demonstration purposes and review purposes. So it doesn't matter how tight you get it at first, it's just a hold it into place. Then you can go ahead and put the step in. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, pull this rope super, super tight. And my goal in this is to get it so tight that it doesn't want to stay cammed down. Okay, see that how it doesn't want to cam down? That's actually ideal, ideal when you're using this platform. Otherwise, if you get it where it cams down, these standoffs are going to want to pull away. You'll see that all the time. People will take pictures of that and say, I can't get my, my perch flat, you know, straight. I can't get it to cam down tight. It wants to pull off the tree. It wiggles. And, dude, it's, it's very un disconcerting when, when there's a half-inch gap there and your, your platform's wiggling and you're trying to walk around a tree. So that's how you want to set it up originally. 
before we step onto any platform, we want to make sure we're tethered in. Not just with a line of the belt, guys. When you're stepping up on the platform, it's time to tether in. You know, most, most accidents happen when you're transitioning to and from a platform. Especially in the, the tree stand world, it's no different with, uh, with saddle platforms. But see how it, it does not want to cam me, set a uh, safe cam down until I step up on it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is relocate my tether to about where I'd want it. Take the, the slack out of it. Okay. So now we're we're actually in the... Uh, I'm just getting rid of the slack here, guys, so you, so you can see me better, see the platform better. So it's a, it's a nifty little platform for a run and gun minimalist system. I, I've got videos out there if you search my name on YouTube. Uh, I hunted with less a sub 10 pounds. This was an integral part of the system. Now, it handles side pressure really well. I mean, I, I can walk all around it. What you can see is it's a little, that's why Zach developed a tab that's wanting to slip inside the step a little bit. But it'll work. I mean, you can, if you're wanting to walk in, I actually took this to Colorado with the elk hunting into a setup over a wallow uh, last year. You know, it's 1.25 pounds for the perch itself, another one pound for the step. You're talking 2.25 pounds. So, so it's it's very basic, but it will it will definitely work. Let's talk about posits. So those are the posits. Super light. It gives you enough room to stand on. Um, fairly easy to, to install once you figure out the system. But let's talk about some of the negatives. One of the things that, as a saddle hunter, I'm predominantly a leaner. This is how I sit up most of the time. This is, this is how I'm waiting on deer 90% of the time. It, sometimes, yes, I'll, I'll have on knee pads, I'll go down, I'll, I'll release some attention to my back, I'll become a sitter, but predominantly I'm a leaner. Most of the guys I know are predominantly leaners. Uh, when you do that, if you want to put if you want to evenly distribute your weight onto this, this platform, you're going to have to pronate your toes considerably to equalize the pressure out on your on your feet, okay? Because there's no way to adjust the angle or tilt of this platform. It is what it is. And if you're on a tree that even bends out that way even more, there's, there's no way around it. You're going to be even worse. So what happens is, most of the time, you end up standing like this which means that my feet are parallel with my legs. They're coming in at a 90 degree like you normally would. But that puts all the pressure on just this rim right here, just this rim of the platform. So as I walk around, as I move, all the pressure of my body, 190 pounds, is sitting on the outside edge of that. And over two hours, three hours, that starts becoming problematic. And I will tell you, over the course of two years, three years, I've never had foot problems in my life, ever. Uh, former military, graduated military police school, we did a 20 mile uh, hike with M60s and, and all the paraphernalia that we carry on a, on a forced march like that, never had foot problems. Last year, after using this for three years, I had to go get custom orthotics and I had to uh, do a lot, of, uh, a lot of rehab with a baseball, rolling it under my arch for a long time. And, and I'm convinced it was because of standing like this on the edge of a edge of this little platform. Um, and that's why I want to show you what boots because people say, well, you're using rubber boots. No, uh, I was using very stiff-soled hiking boots and, and they're not steel shanks, but they're a common hunting boots. I've, I've done hundreds of miles in these over the years. Uh, I wear these to Rocky Mountains. I've been elk hunting seven, eight years out there. These, these are boots I wear for uh, going up and down the Rocky Mountains. And I, I experienced those challenges with it. So. Um, not being able to tilt that, that platform back is, is a huge deal. Um, so anyway, let's get off this. We'll go inside, show you show you the, the uh, how much it weighs. I, I think you know. I, I kind of know. I've already told you it's, it's you know 1.25 pounds for the for the platform, one pound for the step. But let's go ahead and get some measurements on it. Let's let's verify the weight, and we'll talk about the price point for this one too. Okay. Hey guys, we're inside my archery shop now. I wanted to uh, break down and, and give you some more details about the perch like we talked about. So obviously it's going to take two parts of the perch to make it work. You're going to have to have the perch itself, 
which is $157, and then you need a step, which is $20 a piece. So you're talking about $177 here to, uh, to make the perch work, work. And the perch is advertised at 1.25 pounds for the perch itself. The steps come in right at around a pound. So let's take these and, uh, and, and look at it here on my scale and see how it compares. I've got a 110 pound digital bow scale that I've used in my shop to set my draw weights for years and years. So what we're going to do is we're going to hang it up here and see how it comes in, how it compares to what's the advertised weight. And the good thing is it's got a setting that will save that weight for me. So we're at 2.14. So this actually comes in better than advertised because advertised would be 2.25. So 2.14, uh, one tenth of a pound over two pounds. So this, this is a very, very light setup. This is the reason why that I ran this system for a long, long time. Um, very minimalist setup, uh, fairly easy to set up, just doesn't offer any adjustability. Okay, so uh, talk about the pros and cons. Very minimalist setup. Uh, just no adjustability. So we talked about the price point, $177 to to, uh, to get in the ball game with this. Let's look at the uh, square footage. So it is roughly 14 and a half inches wide, and if you measure from where it would contact the tree, you're talking about about eight inches. So 14 and a half by eight inches is 116 square inches of area that you've got to put your foot on. Now obviously not all that is, is actually platform. Some of it's just open space out here. So in reality it's a little bit less than that, but we're gonna go and kind of give it a virtual uh, box, if you will, of 116 square inches. Now what I'm gonna do is I've come up with something, I was actually thinking about this as I've been putting this review together, trying to make it a little bit more objective because as you can see, I've got a lot of more of my personal uh, feelings of what I like in a platform. You'll see that throughout this video. Um, and I've come up with something called a CPI, uh, a CPI index. And we're gonna compare that with all these platforms, the CPI index, cost per inch. So that's the CPI index. So if you take 116 square inches of area to stand on, and $177 cost to get into that, divide that cost into that, that area of square inches, it's $1.53 per square inch to stand on this platform. $1.53 to get in the game with this platform. So that's the CPI index for, for the wild edge purchase, $1.53. So uh, let's head back out in the woods and look at another one. Hey guys, we're back out here with Out on a Limb Solo Scout right now. Uh, this is a really cool little minimalist plat platform for, uh, for you guys that really want to go in lightweight much like I used to do with a perch. The difference is you can see the angle uh, that I talked about on the perch. This one has it built into it. Now it's not adjustable. You're gonna have to live with whatever angle he, he gives you. And Matt, I believe, built in a 30 degree angle here. Uh, there's two different styles of attachment that you can order with this. One is the one with the ears where you cam it over like the uh, Ridge Runner that we're gonna show you here in a little bit. And then he just came out with this one, Matt did, that you can run this over the center buckle strap through. I'm going to try to center it over here so you can see on the tree. So if you grab this and pull it pretty tight, so once you lock that down, guys, that is solid. And I've went ahead and left my tether up here so that we don't have to take it out of my pouch every single time. So guys, look at the bottom of my feet and you can tell how much better it is as far as now my feet are situated exactly on the platform. I'm going to go ahead and loop this around, get it, get this rope out of the way once again. But with that over center buckle, guys, I mean, it's not moving. You talk about, I mean, I'll have to weigh this when I get back to the archery shop here in a little bit. I can't guess it's more than a couple pounds itself, but with this over center buckle, it is solid, extremely solid. Now, I'm going to use the factory straps on all these. Obviously, you guys know that there's a lot of people that are using, you know, 764s or 18s or whatever amp seal. They're using timber hitches or whatever. Obviously, that's an option. I'm, I'm just going to show you the factory setup here, but know that you can you can replace any of these 
with am seal and a timber hitch or, or whatever your desired method of attachment is. But guys, this one, it doesn't provide a lot of real estate, but it's more comfortable because of the angle. And that, that's huge. So again, super, super solid if you wanted to push off here, walk around to this side of the tree, draw, whatever, spin around. You can see the platform ends up budging. Just not a lot of real estate. This is a true minimalist platform. Uh, again, this was a, another idea that uh, my buddy Zach Allisley had. He was working in conjunction with Matt. Matt had the uh, scout that, that went on top of a stick, stick, and they were brainstorming, talking about ideas, and, and Zach's like, why don't you make that a standalone? And uh, guys, I, I believe this sells just about as well as the Ridge Runner nowadays. It's a nifty, nifty little platform. Like I said, not a lot of plat not a lot of real estate, but comfortable, and uh, and you can you can sit like this for a long time, and uh, it get the job done. So we'll take this inside, weigh it, talk about the price, talk about the measurements, how much real estate it's got, and then we'll come back and look at another one. Hey guys, we're back inside with the uh, Soul Scout, and actually one of the great things about coming back inside after I talk out there uh, off the cuff a little bit is I get to uh, actually look and see. Uh, the, about the technical aspects of it. So Matt actually calls this the preset solo as opposed to having two different versions of the solo scout. It, it is and it isn't. So uh, it, it's still the solo scout. It's 4 by 10 uh, but he refers to this as the preset solo. Uh, it, images are coming soon on his website but, but this is it. So um, and then the, the regular Solo Scout is the one that has the ears. The great thing about this one is because it, it, it requires a little less manufacturing, it, it's $72.99 as opposed to $74.99 with the one with ears. So $72.99 for this, uh, this nifty little uh, preset Solo with the OCB buckle, which I'm a huge fan of, guys. I'm, I'm telling you, you can get that so tight. I mean, you talk about handling side pressure and just rock solid, not have to worry about it, you know, giving with you, I don't care what bark tree you're on, aspen, pine, it doesn't matter, you can get this so tight, it is awesome. But again, I just mentioned to you, four, four, inches, uh, four inches deep, and so four inches by ten, so it gives you a, a, a square area inch of, of 40 inches. Divide that into 72.99. You're looking at what I'm calling the CPI, the, the cost per inch of, of $1.82. Um, Matt advertises this at 1.5 pounds, one and a half pounds, with the, with the OCB buckle, with the, the over the cam buckle. It actually comes in at 1.7. I just just weighed it up there. And without that, and I'm going to do this with all these chains. I'm going to win with the the factory buckle, the factory strap, and without because as I mentioned to you out out in the woods, or or you will see here in a second. Um, I realize a lot of the guys are going to be pairing these with Am Steel Daisy chains and things like that. So I want to give you the option of looking at what it is with the buckle and what it is without the buckle. So 1.7 with the overcam buckle, over center buckle rather, and it's a 1.34 with with just just this little uh, nifty little platform. So 1.34 without that heavy over center buckle, uh, advertised at 1.5. So anyway, neat little little system here. Uh, really really a huge fan of that of that design. Okay guys, when it comes to the world of commercially available um, saddle platforms that are already pre-made and everything, I don't really think there's more of a uh, famous or well-known or more recognizable platform than Tethered Predator platform that they originally came out with and kind of launched in conjunction with their Mantis when they uh, hit the market. So this is the, uh, well it is a Gen 2 platform. They had one before that uh, they, they went back and beat it up a little bit. I have one of the first Gen 2 ones, Greg Godfrey Dax. Greg Godfrey actually sent me this one uh, when I was writing that story for Peterson's bow hunting. And so I've kept it the, all this whole time. It's a great little platform. And what you want to do, guys, is, is put this on the tree, pull it as tight as you can. Now what I do is I fold it up a little bit, get it as tight as I can, then push down on that post. Now it's going to lock in. You can see it just cam over super, super, super tight. The great thing about this is, you can adjust this bolt here. This is the first one we've talked about so far. I can adjust it and get that lean I want, or if this tree's leaning and I need to adjust that, I can, I can self-adjust this. I can control the angle of this platform by, a, by an adjustment bolt right there. So let's step up on it and show you, show you how, it, how it runs through its paces. 
most people are very, very familiar with this, guys. It's just pretty much a uh, rock, rock solid sand. They built little, uh, oh, I can't remember what they call those little wings into it that you want to push off, especially going around a, a tree like that. It's, it's really nice for that. that that's kind of a, a patent pending design idea of theirs. So, uh, the best thing I love about it, though is it's very much like the old lone wolf alpha hang ons and things. You can lower and raise and adjust the, the angle of the platform to your liking. Um, it's got enough real estate to stand on. I, you know, if I was going to stand all day, I would either take my tether a little bit so that my feet are more on the platform, supporting my weight. Again, I don't like to stand on that edge. I've had problems with that. But, guys, this is, this is a great platform. Probably, I mean, it sets the standard for platforms, let's, let's be honest. So, uh, great, great platform. It's just a lot of people wanted something a little bit bigger. So, that created a little bit of a market for other people to, to come behind them. But this is, and we're going to talk about that, Predator themselves came out with the Predator XL. We're going to look at that here in a second. But as far as just basic, simple platforms, this one is a really, really good platform. It's the reason I never sold this one um, and kept it in my arsenal all, these, all this time. So, great platform. We'll take it in and weigh it. Talk about the uh, real estate it gives you and the price point, and then come back and look at some more. Hey guys, we're back inside the archery shop now to take a closer look at the Tethered Predator platform. It does ship nowadays with two brackets up here on the top. You can interchange them, uh, pick which one ever you like. Uh, this one is a little bit of an older one, so I just have the uh, the original aluminum bracket up top. It, it absolutely works fine for me. So uh, some people say that the black one works better, but but I mean I don't see how it can get much higher than this. Uh, this stand comes in at 169.99. 169.99. Uh, I say stand platform, whatever. If I if I use the two words interchangeably, uh, this platform is 169.99. It weighs. It is advertised to weigh three pounds. I just put it on the scale. If you uh, if you include the zip zip strap that they uh, include with it it uh, is actually 3.46 so almost three and a half pounds so so this little strap is half a pound um, by itself without it if you just weigh just the platform itself is 3.00 pounds <laughs> they advertise it at three pounds it comes in at 3.00 pounds that's uh, they must have done a lot of engineering to hit that number exactly like that so uh, it is 11 and a half inches uh, from from the seat of the tree where it's going to seat up against it and 10 inches wide not counting these two little bat wing ears okay because that's just going to give just a you know a half an inch or so on on each side here so so from here to here if you go across that is uh, 10 inches 10 inches across right like that so again you're gonna get another half inch or so like that but 11 and a half by 10 you're looking at 115 uh, square inches of standing platform available there uh, that would give you a CPI or cost per inch of a dollar forty-eight. So anyway, that's where the uh, plat the uh, Predator platform lands. Uh, hopefully, that gives you a little bit more information to compare and contrast. A lot of features built in this one. Love, love, love this adjustment knob. Spend a little bit of time talking about that. I mean, you can get this thing way down if you want to. So a lot of features on that one. And uh, so let's go take a look at another one. Hey guys, we're back out here with Matt Garris's Ridge Runner from Out on the Limb. Uh, this has been a fantastic selling platform in the subtle, subtle world. Uh, comes in at a really good price point. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. A very, very, um, just a solid platform. This is actually the platform that I put my son on for the last couple years uh, when he transitioned from, from climbers into the, the saddle hunting world. Uh, loved it. Um, just, just a solid all-around platform. You'll see the two ears here. That, that's what I talked about with the uh, Solo Scout, the, the different options there. This, this is the way that the Ridge Runner comes. And so what you do is you, you use this cam buckle strap to uh, to go around the tree. We'll show you how that how that works. A lot of people don't talk about how to put a Ridge Runner on properly. What you want to do is lift it up as high as you can here. Pull this cam buckle strap super, super tight. Okay. When you do that, you'll notice that when you cam it over, it kind of wants to pop up on you if you pull that super tight. See it? I just want to pop up, so give it just a little bit of lift here. Now it'll lock in. So, so that's how you lock in a Ridge Runner. You've got a really big knurled adjustment knob here, which, which I really like. The, the difference is, Matt kind of designed this to give you a lot more upward angle. And you've heard me talk about, I'm a huge fan of the downward angle. 
So if you screw it all the way in, and we'll show you this here in the archery room, a little better close up here. If you screw it all the way in, you can get flat, which is probably good enough for a lot of people, but it really offers no more downward cant or downward adjustment or lean more than that. Now, one thing you could do if you wanted to is totally remove this adjustment knob. Stick it in your pocket, and you can get a little bit more lean on it, but again, still not a ton. So let's show you how it handles side pressure here. The one thing that, that I love about it, again, I put my son in it, it's super rock solid. I didn't have to worry about it going anywhere on him. If I'm trusting my son's life to it, my life to it, highly recommend it. Uh, one thing I love about it, it's wide enough for me as you know, a 5'10", 190 pound adult to comfortably put my, my feet sideways, shoulder width apart. So, you know, the, the Predator, you're a little tighter here because of the, the smaller, narrower platform. The, the Ridge Runner really gives you a lot, of, a lot of foot space out here to the side to go out on. Okay? I just wish it would go a little bit more angled, but that's my preference. It's not a big deal to a lot of people. Okay, But again, super, super... I mean, I'm pushing hard on that. Super solid handle side pressure like a champ. I'm, I'm pushing on it. It's not going anywhere. So, great platform. Really good price point. You know, Matt obviously hit a home run with this product here. Uh, I'm going to put this adjustment knob back in here before I lose it. Just one of those things, you, know, you always have give and take with any product. If I could personally design this and go, man, this is awesome, it's 100% the way I wanted, with one tweak, it would be to have it just have a little bit more down angle. But other than that, with the price point, how solid it is, how easy it is to attach, how easy it is to pack. Uh, th this is a really solid offering from, from uh, Allen & Lynch. Hey guys, we're back inside now with the Ridge Runner. And uh, again, solid little platform. One of the things I didn't mention out there, but but you can see it was so readily available. All these cutouts here that are grooved, these really, really help dig into the lugs of your soles, of, of your boots. Uh, pro just provide a really nice platform for, for traction. Uh, uh, the platform itself, eight inches deep. 16 inches across so uh, 16 by 8 offers 128 inches of surface area and one of the things I love about this platform is it, it's it's more wide than it is long and that's why a lot of people when they were looking for something a little bit bigger than a Predator at the time before the XL platforms that we're going to talk about here in a little bit hit the hit the market this is one of the reasons why that people really like it you can really see how you can spread out your feet width wise shoulder width wise on this platform so uh, 159 99 128 inches of space. You divide that out for a CPI cost per inch of a dollar and a quarter. So um, weight-wise, it's advertised to hit a three and a half pounds. With the strap that is included with it, it's actually 4.12, 4.12 pounds with the strap. Without a strap, it uh, is is pulling down the scale to 3.7, 3.7 without without the the the, the uh, without the strap. In case you want to use a daisy chain or something like that. Hey guys, now we're getting into the meat of the review that I was really looking forward to. Here's exactly why I ordered so many platforms, okay? Uh, I've shown you the other ones I had just because I thought it would be really cool to be able to show them all in one video. You don't have to search across all the forums, different YouTube channels, whatever. Look at one video review, another video review. I wanted to kind of put them all into one. But this is kind of the last three we're going to talk about here. This is what I've really been excited about. And we're getting into the XL platforms. Uh, I'll, I'll probably make another video showing you my new, what I've been tell, calling since last October, is I wanted to go what, what I called a hybrid setup. So it was you know, a larger platform, still a saddle. I could still hide behind a tree, especially at a destination food source. Swing out, shoot a deer, swing back in, use the tree for cover. Uh, I, I love that aspect of the saddle, but I wanted something that I could walk around on a platform um, if, if I wanted to, to take an easy weak side shot and just spin around and do it, I could do it without having to navigate and spin and twist 360 in a saddle. It's a lot easier just to walk around versus spin in a saddle. So these last three platforms are really kind of the meat of this video review. This is kind of what I wanted to get to. This is Predator, the Predator XL from Tethered. 
this was their answer. Uh, obviously, they saw where the market was going. A lot of people were asking for larger platforms. The, the Cooner Sandbush from Lone Wolf Custom Gear getting a lot of traction. Uh, Trophy Line launched their mission. It came out. Uh, Predator started seeing that as well. And they came out with a little larger larger Predator. It's the Predator XL. And let me show you the, some of the differences. One thing is they send it with two different uh, top portions. Uh, they send it with, with the... Uh, this one right here is the, the the traditional aluminum one, and then there's the black one here. Everyone says the black one bites a little better. I like black and red are my favorite two colors, so I'll put the black one on there. But they send you two, so I'll just show you that real quick, and then you get a you know a large trap here with it too. So uh, let's put it on a tree, walk around it. I will show you this. They came out with a really nice adjustment knob. You, you see, that adjustment knob is pretty huge to me, pretty big, because that's what allows you to get that really nice, look at that downward angle. Uh, guys, that, that is huge to me from a comfort standpoint. And if, if you don't believe it, wait till you get a platform that's this, this comfortable. Or go out to, a, again, to a barbershop, flip that stool over, and then have to put your weight on it. You know, if you're getting a haircut, it's probably you're there for 15 minutes, it won't matter. When you're on a tree for, three, four, five hours, you're doing an all-day rut set. Being able to, to distribute your weight on this is, is really super, super nice. So, we're gonna put it on the tree exactly the same way we did the, uh, the, the smaller brother. Again, guys, a lot of people are going to turn to someone like Mike Isabel's uh, back, Backwoods Country Mobile Gear. Uh, Trevor Bird, and I can't, I'm sorry, Trevor, that I, I can't remember the name of your of your uh, company. Makes a lot of great Daisy ch Daisy chains and Amsil products. They're going to look to somebody like those two guys and, and replace this strap because it has the tendency to clank. Right? Uh, I, I get that. That's that's a given. Again, we're going to push down on this post, cam it over. Look how hard that bites right off the bat. It's that's the first time I put it on a tree, guys. The very first time, and it's just rock solid. Again, now I'm to the point where with that predator I talked about, my feet were kind of touching. Now I'm able to get sideways or spread my feet out, evenly distribute my weight from the shoulders down. Uh, a lot more comfortable. Again, you've got these little wings built into it. It's kind of the iconic design from Predator. I will tell you that you know it's it's not going anywhere. It, it kind of wants to push away a little bit more when I push back. Again, I'm pushing behind it. It's not going anywhere though because it's catching over here. But I can see it move just slightly. But you know you've got the post to stand on. You know tons of options here. It's basically I mean you can tell it's going to be just as good as the Predator. It's just a little bit larger. That's the Predator XL. So, the good thing, that knurled adjustment knob, guys, they really improved it. I really, really like it. I mean, it's been super easy. So if you were at a tree and you, you wanted to adjust your angle, just hop off over here on the side. You can either hang like you're one sticking or stand on, up on top of your climbing method. Yeah, that's, that's really nice as far as the way that really adjusts in and out. Very, super easy. So on your adjustment system, well done, tethered, very, very good. So let's take it inside, show you how much larger it is than its uh, predecessor, the original Baby Brother um, Predator platform, and we'll show you the differences between the two. Hey guys, we're back in the shop now with the uh, Predator XL. One of the things I do want to point out is, you know, I, I mentioned with the Ridge Runner, those those cutout grooves, the channels that were cut into it. Uh, Tethered actually sort of created those a little bit in reverse. They actually have raised spots here, which leaves a relief. And if you if you run your hand across this, it really provides a ton of traction. The teeth are also a lot more aggressive on the out, outer edge here for standing, pushing off for side pressure. Uh, and, and I mentioned this neural adjustment knob here is just... Uh, really, you know, for lack of a better word, a, a pleasure to, to work with here as far as if you're going to try to, to uh, adjust the uh, angle of the post in and out, which will obviously uh, it, the end result is it's, uh, changes the level of the platform. 
So uh, uh, really, you know, I, I think they've, they've not only made it bigger, they have improved on it in several areas. You can tell they put some thought into it, they just didn't throw it together and go, ah, we're going to make a bigger one. So uh, the Predator XL comes in at $189, $189.99. They advertise it at four pounds. If you, th if you throw on the zip strap that they include with it, uh, 4.58 is what it tops the scales off. If you take that zip strap off and just measure it, just, or just weigh just the platform itself, 4.04 pounds, 4.04 pounds. So again, they advertise it at four pounds, 4.0. Uh, nailed it again. They came in exactly where, uh, where, where they said they would. Uh, the width is 13 by 13, width and depth. So width and length uh, is 13 by 13. That gives you a total square area to stand on of 169 inches, 169 inches. Compare that to the, uh, to the old, uh, the original Predator was 11 half by 10. That makes this platform 47% bigger. It doesn't seem like it, but I ran the number several times through different calculators online and everything, 47% bigger. Uh, that gives this a CPI, a cost per inch rating of $1.12. So, so we're actually starting to get a lot better return on our investment when we move up into the XL platforms. Um, again, I know people are going to say, well, well, how does it really compare? What does it look like? Let me, uh, let me bring back the, uh, the OG, the original gangster here for, for these guys. Uh, if you back these up and put them post to post here, you'll kind of see the difference. So you'll see that it's, it's really, you get about another inch there on the bottom, but you really get that, that good ability to spread your feet out and, uh, and stand at a comfortable width apart. Uh, again, you're, you're really starting to uh, kind of get into the XLs a little bit with this. So, uh, you know, people really wanted it and uh, Tether delivered with the uh, Predator XL. Okay guys, we're out here with the final two. Uh, these are the big dogs. These are the ones that a lot of people, frankly, in the saddle hunting world have been getting pretty excited about over the last uh, three, four, five months or so. I know I was. Uh, like I said, I, I told a, several buddies of mine that, that I hunt with, I'm like, dude, I, I really want to go to what, what I'm calling a hybrid setup. Uh, you know, some saddle hunters have been using larger platforms for years, I, I get it, but this is just what I called it. And, and when I learned about Trophy Line coming out with this, dude, I got stoked. So this is their mission platform. I'll be honest with you, when I took this out and I unboxed it, uh, I, I saved every box of every other platform that I bought here in the last couple months, except for this one. Uh, I took this one out of the box and I threw the box away. All right, that's it, they nailed it. That's exactly what I was looking for. I, I love the, the post being on push off this. I love the, the size of it, I love the weight. I love everything about it. Except for one thing, we'll get into that in just a second. So, um, they send you a couple really cheap backpack straps. These are the backpack straps. They're, they're non-padded. They're, they're the most basic backpack straps you could ever want. Um, I'm going to give you a couple different options. There's something you can do to make those work. We'll send you a link to that here in the description here in a little bit. When we go inside, I'll show you that, that option. Or, or you can order a whole new backpack strap for about the same cost. That is really nice. It's a military style that connects across the chest. I'll give you that link too here in a second. But let's go ahead and put this up on a tree. And kind of run this one through its paces. I've actually been on this one a few times because I was so excited about it when I opened it up. To be honest with you. So again, I'm going to close it. push down and then when I, I cam it over again that's where the action gets super super rock solid you'll see it doesn't budge guys this one uh, I have since spoken with the uh, one of the owners of trophy line they did extensive TMA testing with this it passed beyond flying colors I, I believe the weight limit for TMA stands is 350 pounds they do drop tests they do all kinds of stuff they actually hung the 350 not from the center they moved it out to the very edge where I'm standing way out here, put 350 in there like, okay, held up, held up to that, let's go to 600. Eh, held up to that, let's go to 900. They kept going, they got almost five times the TMA limit, guys. Again, TMA limit being 350, they almost hit five times before the stand finally failed and the casting didn't break, it was the post up here. Five times, you're, five times three, I mean, you're talking 1,500 pounds or so, close to it, okay? So, uh, this stand is exceptionally stiff, exceptionally stable. There's, there's no flex on it. I love this post. If you want to walk around it and put weight, you know, 
you need to take this shot right here, and what, whatever you need to do, does this one, and, and here's what I really love about it. This is going to size now that if, you know, if you're hunting a lot of bedding areas like I do, and, and you're sitting here, and all of a sudden something sneaks in, and it's right on top of you. You know what? You can stand right here, and you've got this shot right here. It's almost like having tree stand available to you with the benefit of a saddle. The comfort of a saddle, the ability to hide behind a tree, use this as a blocker. Um, to me, guys, this this is the best of both worlds. This is what I'll be going to. I, I love, love, love this stand. I love the, the room it gives you. I love the comfort. You can adjust it. You know, We talked about that adjustability of being able to angle the platform down. I will tell you, I don't think you need to angle this one down as much because on when you're using it a tin or a light, a, a, a tree stand, you're going to be pretty much standing on it. Uh, you can stand on this to take, I mean, saddle hunters have traditionally had two options to, to alleviate stress, right? You're a leaner or you're a sitter. Now, you can be a stander. So a leaner, sitter, and stander all in one. I, I, this was exactly what I was looking for, guys. But I will tell you this. As much as I love this, I, I told you, I threw away the box as soon as I opened this up. I mean, I put it on a tree. I carried it out here. I fell in love with this stand. I'm like, this, this, this thing is awesome. Okay? And uh, I will probably replace this with AM steel and, and timber hitch it around a tree, to be honest with you. But we're going to go inside, and I'll put some backpack straps on here. And I'll show you, because I'm not a big pack guy, right? You, you've seen some of my old videos. I walk in with things in my pocket, something in my chest pocket, and, and I'm hunting, you know? I don't care if I go two miles in. I don't need a ton of stuff. I figured out I'm going to go back to the car to get my kill kit. I don't need a ton of stuff with me. So I just wanted something I could backpack and carry my bow, right? I'm going to lash my sticks to this. The problem is this right here. If you'll look real closely, and I'm going to put backpack straps on this here in a little bit, and we'll show you that once you put this on your back, this hits you right in the small of the back. And it's, to be honest with you, so if this is the small of the back, that is hitting first before anything else. So I've got some ideas on, on you know, how that I can alleviate that some. One is possibly getting a, some closed cell foam, you know, maybe zip tying it to this, cutting out that, that walling out a hole for that to fit into, and then that way your, your whole foam would be on your back instead of this ball. That ball, quite honestly, is very uncomfortable. This thing would be a grand slam home run hit. The price point is amazing on this, guys. We'll talk about that here in a second when we take it in the shop. But that ball is just the thing that's like, ugh. If it wasn't for that, this would be absolutely perfect. So uh, we'll put on some backpack straps. We'll show you that here in a second just so that I can give you, you know, I told you I'd give you the good, the bad, the ugly on every one of these. So uh, if it wasn't for that, this would be the best stand on the market for what I was looking for. Okay, guys, let's break down Trophy Line's mission a little bit. The platform here, it's, uh, it, it was exactly what I was wanting, wanting back in October, November of last year. And no one had even started talking about Excel or mega platforms or super big platforms or anything. It's just what I envisioned. I told a couple people about it. Uh, and, and thankfully, the industry uh, kind of veered that way. I think a lot of people were, were akin or feeling uh, uh, very similarly to what I was feeling as well. Uh, Trophy Line came out with this, and I, I love, love, love this platform. I, I don't think I actually talked about this while I was out there on the tree. These cutouts all around it, I mean, are really nice if you want to put your foot there and push off. It gives you a lot of different angles, and they did that on purpose. It, it kind of helps camouflage the, the, the platform a little bit, sort of a la like, a la, like uh, uh, Lone Wolf's uh, Alpha Hang-Ons did. You know, of course, obviously, this is being manufactured by the same uh, people that, that own uh, you know, Novix, and, and, and uh, you know, they've got those connections to Lone Wolf, and we won't get into that right now. But, um, you know, there's a, there's a heritage there. There's a history. They understand that, that camo design. And, and these cutouts here really enable you to push off and, and push in different directions. It, it has the raised little channels, sort of like the Predator XL does. Really good, good traction here. Um, I, I love this top post. Uh, it's, it's just a, it's a cool little platform. What we've got to figure out as, as a team, if you will, um, as an industry, as a bunch of people using this, is how to get over... Uh, how to get over this hump here when you close it down and want to backpack that in is this hump here 
uh, I think I mentioned to you out there on the tree <clears throat> an idea of, of cutting you know a, a length of closed cell foam and, and carving out or hollowing out a spot for that ball socket to go into and maybe zip tying it on there. Uh, I know Trophy Line is thinking about this, this uh, and trying to address this. They're going to have some things to come out with but uh, that's one option um, that is if you're going to backpack it in. If you're not going to backpack it in, if you're going to, you know, another thing when I'm going to film my boys saddle hunting a lot this year. We're going on a bear hunt in five days. I'm going to, I'm going to film them a lot over in Illinois and Missouri, all around. If I'm taking a backpack in with camera gear, I, I can just slip this in a backpack. That ball then becomes a moot point. It's not. It's not a problem because I'm not wearing it on my back, if that makes sense. So either take it in in a backpack or, or we got to figure out something to do with that little ball. I know Trophy Line is ad addressing it. If you are backpacking it, if you're going to use the backpack straps, Trophy Line sent these, and I mean, I call them cheap backpack straps out there. I mean, I, I told you I, I wouldn't hold back. Uh, the, these are. Uh, there's a couple things you can do with them. You can buy these uh, detachable shoulder pads. I bought them uh, a couple years back when I was carrying Lone Wolf, uh, Lone Wolf Wild Edge Steps and putting them on the bag, uh, carrying them on my shoulder, and literally just flip them like that. It, then the, you'd have something, some padding for these backpack straps. These, I'll leave the link down below in the description below. These are $11.99 for a pair of those, okay? Or I think a better option for $9.99, a couple dollars cheaper, these are U.S. Peacekeeper backpack straps, um, and again, they're $9.99. They, they clip across your chest uh, right here. Uh, they're fully padded. They won't go anywhere. They're, they're very easy to put on. Uh, this is actually what I'm going to be using on these $9.99. Uh, simple upgrade to, to take care of that. So, so let's get back to talking about the platform itself. It's 18 by 14. That gives you a ton of real estate. Like I said, that's what I was looking for. That's 252 inches. Uh, I said we're moving up to the big boys now. 252 inches. Yet it's still, uh, you know, Trophy Line advertises this at 5.4 pounds. With the strap that they provide, it actually came in at 6.26. 6.26. Without the strap, it's 5.7. So, so less than six pounds, barely over five and a half pounds. Um, this is what I was looking for in a hybrid setup. And when I talk about hybrid setup, meaning the versatility of a saddle, the comfort of a saddle, being able to hide behind the tree, swing out, shoot a deer, swing back in. I've done it multiple times. Uh, I love, the, love that aspect, the safety provides, provided by a saddle. But I love the being able to stand up on a platform and just turn around and shoot to my weak side. Uh, it is literally the best of both worlds. That's why I call it a hybrid hybrid setup. So uh, 252 inches on this $189. That gives this a CPI, a, a cost per inch of 75 cents. So, so you're starting to get a really good return on your investment here. So um, just a, a phenomenal offering from Trophy Line, their first entry into a, plat, uh, a saddle platform. And, and I think they knocked it out of the park if, if we can just address this little hump here. Um, like I said, if you're going to stick it in a backpack, no big deal. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to address it somehow. Okay, so uh, let's go back out in the woods for a one final platform look. Okay, guys, we're out here wrapping up with a very final piece of the puzzle here, and uh, it is the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Tuner's Ambush. Uh, just wanted to show you they, they include some really some pretty nice straps here for, for a backpack strap for uh, just a, a uh, factory offering here. But uh, they also give you two two straps. Which is kind of nice. Again, you know, I'm very cognizant of the way that saddle hunters think and and work and and what they're looking for. So, um, you know, I get you're probably going to put Daisy Ain't uh, and still change on this. But let's uh, let's just use what they sent first of all. Now, I will tell you this: these edges here, they used to send this with a silent touch rubber coating, and I was really hoping that that mine would be that way. Evidently, the Lone Wolf Custom Gear has switched manufacturers of their products and parts and pieces and so a lot of these edges are extremely sharp and I've already seen a post or two on some of the forums where this strap has come in contact with some of these edges here and started fraying a little bit so people are actually taking some sandpaper and sanding that smooth and then touching it up with some um, rattle can spray paint and, and getting rid of those those sharp edges so definitely something to be concerned about and to keep in the back of your mind there but let's uh Put the sucker on a tree. See how solid it is.
it wants to bite so well. Actually, I'm going to have to not start it so high. I mean, dude, this thing is biting hard. First attempt to put it on a tree, and I can tell you it's, it's going to be a little bit like a wild edge step that you're going to have to have find a sweet spot. That sucker is camming hard, biting in really aggressively. So, let's see if I can get it to. Okay, a couple bounces there and I got it seated. Now, one of the concerns, I've seen a lot of people talk about flex. If you can zero in there, you can see just a little bit. Now, I'm 190, pretty much on the dot. So take, a, take an idea from that. But I'm having, a, I'm having a bounce to get that flex, okay? But it certainly flexes way more than the mission. That mission is super stiff. This does have a little flex. This is, it would not be a deal breaker for me at all. I mean, I'm having to, when, when I say flex, I'm, I can feel it move a quarter of an inch or so with 190 pounds of bouncing on it. If I'm not bouncing, it feels super stiff. Okay, again, you've got the top post to push off on, however you want to. You want to look, use it like this for your drop shot. I've got enough real estate here to do the same thing where I can walk all the way around it. One of the differences I can tell you from being up on it is the, the Lone Wolf mission had all those little cutouts. I could stick my foot in all those cutouts. I'll show you that here in a little bit. I kind of didn't point that out when I was on the tree. But there's a lot of irregular geometric shapes on that mission. They purposely designed into the to the, to the uh, platform, this is kind of smooth and a little harder to find a spot to, I mean, you can walk around it obviously not a problem, but I, I do miss, see, see where I miss those little cutouts on that mission. That's a really nice feature of that trophy line mission. So, let's jump down and show you this, uh, this angle, angle adjustment thing they built in here. So this is kind of nice. If you zoom in here, there's this little rod here. It's kind of that goes through. It's actually pre-drilled and threaded. So it's actually on this threaded bolt that I can turn here. And as you see, as I turn this threaded bolt, you'll watch that thing walk up here. And that's what allows you to go ahead and, and push it on down. Or you can walk it backwards. And now you push it all the way to the end. Now it's angled up. So you go from this angle here to if I walk it all the way up, I can actually cant this down as I've talked about talked about and spoken about too all through this video. And this thing bites so well that it almost takes putting my weight on it to get it to go down that way. It bites extremely well. But Again, this thing doesn't can't down like it. If you notice that Predator XL, I could turn that thing down like the Scout almost. The uh, Trophy Line Mission, I could turn down. This one does not have quite the adjustment as far as a, an angle or a leaning angle that those other two do. But again, if you're on a fairly straight tree, I think you're going to utilize these large, really XL platforms more in the manner of, of being able to use them as, a, as almost a tree stand with the benefits of being in a saddle. So let's take it inside, uh, do some measuring, and I'll tell you the price point and everything, and we'll wrap up from there. Okay, guys, back in the shop with the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Kunert's Ambush. Uh, things I like about this, I think it's got a super, super cool design, kind of a shadow uh, camo design. We talked about the camo before on the uh, Novix inspired or Novix powered trophy line mission. Uh, that is really cool. Uh, there is no question that this stand, or this platform rather, bites a tree better than anything else out there. I mean, just something about the, the way the leverage uh, works here on this larger platform. Uh, it, it bites incredibly well. Almost almost too well, if you will. You have to back the strap off some, to, uh, or else you'd probably be in danger of breaking the strap or popping it. It's, it's, uh, it bites extremely well. Uh, Pretty impressed with the shoulder shoulder pads they put on. Like I said, nine dollars for the ones that I suggested for the mission platform. They're actually probably the nine dollar ones are probably better than this, but still, that's a that's a pretty nice little strap they they give you or backpack straps. Um, I love the square footage. It's almost identical to the uh, to the ambush. I mean, if I hold them up side by side, and I may do that here in a second. 
Um, but but yeah, they're they're almost identical uh, as far as platform size, square inches. Uh, this one's actually 16 and a half by 14 and a half. That is uh, uh, 239 and a quarter inches of, of square space. So uh, the the things that I, you know the the negatives or the the cons, if you will, this is a this is the most expensive one out there. 299 dollars and 99 cents, a penny shy of 300 bucks for the sucker. Uh, so if you divide that out, CPI cost per inch, uh, you're you're back up to the dollar and a quarter. So you can see what a better value the mission is versus this from a value perspective. Um, but completely flat. When you fold this down, uh, you don't have that hump to to worry about. You can see it is perfectly flat. So this one in its current state is going to backpack a whole lot better than the mission. So so it's got that going for it. Now. Uh, Another thing that I don't like, this thing has extremely sharp edges. I talked about that on the tree as far as uh, being able to, uh, to, to run that strap around and, and there's people already experiencing fraying and cutting uh, from this post. If you run your fingers anywhere around this and you catch this, I mean, I'm talking it, almost knife sharpness. I mean, every edge is extremely, extremely sharp. So uh, just something to be aware of. I don't know if you want to sand it down, file it, whatever, and then repaint it, touch it up. I, I don't even know if that's a possibility for you, but just something to be very cognizant of. Um, Long Wolf Custom Gear advertises this as four pounds, 13 ounces with the cam buckle. Uh, it's, it's interesting that they're the only one that, that post the weight with the cam buckle. Everyone else has, has been pretty much spot on without the strap and they make a big deal saying it's four, four pounds 13 ounces with the cam buckle. Uh, they need to change their website to say four pounds 13 ounces without the cam buckle because uh, it's 5.2 with the cam buckle and, and without the cam buckle it's 4.75. So they nailed the weight if they would leave the cam buckle off. So anyway just an aside there but uh, anyway great little stand. It, it, it has a little more flex than the Mission uh, you saw that out there on the tree. So, um, but other than that, you know, other than its price point, um, you, you can see it doesn't have the cutouts that the mission has, but but pretty much the same square footage, and and it's not quite the value, but but still an awesome stand. And the main thing it's got going for it is it does not have that hump right there. So uh, let's come back and close it out with some final thoughts here in just a second. Okay, guys, I grabbed. I grabbed the uh, mission here and I wanted to uh, put them and stack them up back to back. I, I mentioned to you that they're almost exactly the si same size. So just in case you don't have a mission and an ambush, you can get a feel for exactly how they stack up. You can see the cutouts are a little different on them, but other than that, I mean, you're looking at almost virtually identical uh, square inch space there as far as standing room on these platforms. So hopefully you can see that. They are literally almost identical other than the shape. But size-wise, there's not enough to separate the two. Well, hey guys, we're going to wrap this video up right now and, you know, close it out with some final thoughts. Um, you know, this video obviously turned out to be quite a bit longer than I, even I anticipated. And I knew I was going to do a lot of in-depth comparisons and reviews and, and thoughts. And, and But hopefully you'll appreciate that. And the fact that you know maybe it'll consolidate some of this into one place one repository so you don't have to go out and, and look all over the place to uh to compare and contrast and get different weights and things like that uh plus obviously you know i weighed every single one of these i measured every single one of them it's real world stuff um you know these i kind of broke these down into three different categories if you will you got the minimalist style with the the perch and, and then the the preset and the solo scouts uh, that little scout is a tremendous little offering at $72.99. Rock, rock solid. You know, I hunted off the perch for, for a long time. Uh, I just kind of wanted to evolve my hunting style into something a little different. Uh, specifically going into the, the huge big XL platforms from one extreme to the other almost. Um, in, in the middle of the road there, you got your, your Ridge Runner, your Predator, and, and almost your Predator XL kind of bridges the gap between that normal, uh, you know, what we we would consider a traditional platform offering into now what's becoming you know the big boys the the, the xls the the ambush and the mission uh you know that that ambush is is a really super nice platform it's just you know a little high um really sharp edges but but boy does it bite well and does it fold down and pack well and, and that that mission boy you talk about a price point and and a uh, good roi and almost the perfect package uh, just needs a little bit of tweaking trophy lines aware of that uh, i've spoken with them i know a lot of people have given them some feedback 
So until then, we'll just keep uh, keep evolving, keep working on products. The great thing is that means just there's going to be more new products uh, as we fine tune things down the road. And so uh, you know, I, I know. Let me close out with this because I know that that one of the things you'll get is people go, "Oh my gosh, how can you go from such a you know a sub ten pound run and gun package to to now you're thinking about these big XL platforms?" Guys, there's uh, you know a Predator, which has been the standard uh, standard bearer, flag bearer for a long time. It's three pounds, and, and you you move up to that uh, trophy line mission. It's 5.7. That's 2.7 pounds difference, guys. My, my my weight will fluctuate more than that in a day's time. Um, you know, if I'm really worried about 2.7 pounds, I need to hit the gym a little bit more. I need to eat less tacos. Uh, for me, less Rotel cheese dip and, and ice cream. Uh, but you know, 2.7 pounds. Not, it's, it's not a deal breaker. So, so the advantages that XL platform give you, to, in my mind, are way more beneficial, way out for the, out, outweigh the cost return analysis uh, of, of you know going from just needing 2.7 pounds. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's definitely well worth that 2.7 pounds. I heard someone say, you know, the great thing about saddle hunting is you decide where you want the weight. You know, it's like adding it to a lightweight bow. But uh, anyway, hopefully some of that makes sense. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, we appreciate you having you as part of our subscriber base. We'll definitely be bringing you more saddle hunting uh, action and uh, reviews down the road. So uh, stick around. We'll see you on down the line.